Hello booktube, my name is Carrie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my October TBR and I am so excited for October because this is the first October in a while where I have really been in the mood for some spooky and Halloween-esque reads and yeah I'm just really excited about what I have planned for this month. I am also going to be taking part in the Gothtober readathon. I will link all of the info including the um, creators and the Twitter page etc down below. Uh, there is an amazing prompt list for this and actually the books that I have like chosen for my October TBR weren't picked specifically with this prompt list in mind. My TBR just kind of naturally fit a lot of the categories for this so I'm really excited about that and yeah the first book that I actually have to talk about is one that is highest priority because it is a carryover from September and that is Homegoing by Ya Jesse. I finished my last book in September with a few days to spare and just didn't make it to homegoing. I was really not in the mood to pick it up and didn't really want to start it if my heart wasn't in it. But now it is a really high priority because this was the only book in all of September that was on my TBR that I didn't finish. So yes, must finally get to this. Now on to the books that fill the Gothtober prompts. So first up I have Disfigured on Fairy Tales, Disability, and Making Spaces by Amanda Ledek. This is actually a nonfiction book that is all about the history of fairy tales and how they oftentimes feature a very problematic representation of disfigured and disabled characters and how that has actually influenced our perception and stereotyping of disfigured and disabled characters today. And I first heard about this from Jen Campbell's channel and it just sounds so interesting. I have had to study the original like Grimm's fairy tales uh, in like the original German and there is a very big theme of disfigurement in a lot of their short stories and I really would like to reread those um, sometime this year or next year so I would like to get to Disfigured before then so that I can have this as like an analytical frame of mind to go into that with because I think that it is important that we recognize the problematic tendencies of uh, classics and especially of the representation that they give to certain characters. So this is one that I'm really excited about. I have access to an ebook or an audiobook of it, so I'm not yet sure which of those formats I will be um, reading this in, but it's nice to have options at least. Um, and that will be fulfilling the prompt of read a book with disability representation. The next book that I have to talk about is The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. I am so excited about this because this will be the first book that I will be reading along with for the uh, book club called Never Too Late to Read Classics on Goodreads. I will link it down below. I love this book club. It is such a great community of people appreciating classics and this is their classic horde pick for the month and I am so excited because this is a classic horror novel that takes place on Halloween and follows a young boy who gets separated from his friends and some supernatural or paranormal events uh, determine the course of his evening and this just sounds so interesting. I love this like authentic Halloween um, cover. It's like just so spooky and yeah this fits the prompt for a uh, cover with bones on it and uh, I just cannot get over this cover you guys. Then the next book I have is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I am choosing this to fulfill the read a book with red on the cover prompt. This is a absolutely gorgeous Virago edition that I was lucky enough to find just accidentally in an airport back in like Scotland and oh, I have been wanting this cover for years so I am obsessed with it and I actually do not know what this book is about so I can't really give a synopsis of this. I have been avoiding spoilers of this for years but the movie with Army Hammer and Lily James who I both absolutely love is coming out in the end of October so this is also another priority read because I definitely need to watch that movie. It is a bit of a chunky book but um, I think I'm going to dedicate the last two weeks in October to exclusively reading this because I have to make it through this. I need this gorgeous edition to actually be on my red shelf for once. The next two books I'm going to talk about together and they are The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. These are our two selections for our Buddy Read Book Club. This is a challenge that one of my good friends from college and I have set for each other where uh, every month we each pick one book by a BIPOC author. We're currently trying to work our way through some classics right now. We read her book for the first half of the month and then my book for the second half of the month and then have like a discussion, catch up, FaceTime 
usually with wine, <laughs> to discuss these reads. And so my friend chose The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, which is the story of a young girl who she dreams of having blue eyes because she sees it as this like perfect beauty standard. And she has a lot of internalized racist beauty views towards herself because she is a black woman who is um, constantly told that she's really ugly by her parents and it has a very traumatic effect on her as she's growing up and she has this very skewed representation of what black women's beauty should be and obviously I, I'm gonna assume that colorism plays a role in that. I have heard that this is a very deep emotional read. We actually were originally intending to read Sula by Toni Morrison but my local bookstores were completely sold out of any copies of it and there's like some type of printing thing going on in the US right now so they said that they weren't sure when they would be getting some in stock and she tried to get two copies from her bookstore but she couldn't even get one so I had a copy of The Bluest Eye, she has a copy of it as well and we were like okay this is the best that we can do meeting in the middle here. Um, and then the book that I chose was Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Giovanni's Room is a classic of LGBTQ plus fiction and this follows a young black man in the 1950s as he is visiting Paris for the first time and he comes into contact with this other young man and they have romantic feelings for one another and the main character is kind of torn of whether or not he's going to act on those feelings. I am so excited for this because I originally attempted to read this a couple years ago now when I was just not in the mood to read anything and put it back on my shelf after like 10 pages. So finally getting around to this. I have only read James Baldwin's nonfiction work so pretty excited to start with his like most well-known fiction. And this is obviously filling the book with LGBTQ plus representation and oh The Blue Eye is filling the BIPOC author representation um, as well. So glad that both of those could also fit into Gothtober. Next I have Daisy Miller and the Turn of the Screw by Henry James and this fulfills the female protagonist um, prompt twice as nice because both of these include female protagonists. Daisy Miller is a young New York socialite who I believe is in Europe, probably Paris, for the first time and understands that there is a completely different like social atmosphere there and it's her kind of coming to terms with that and like getting outside of her comfort zone. And I believe that there's like a scandal that ensues along with that. And then The Turn of the Screw is about a governess who begins to see sinister figures um, in the home where she is a governess to two children. And that is like one of the classic like ghost stories. And I am definitely reading this more for The Turn of the Screw, but I feel like I have to finish Daisy Miller too because it's so short. This whole collection is under 200 pages. So I feel like I have to read the, both of them, um, but Turn of the Screw is going to be my focus. Um, and I'm really excited for this because I've never read any Henry James and I feel like these would be good introductions to his writing. Um, and I just love the like eerie cover of this in like the penguin um, paperbacks. Like it, they're just little eyes. It's so creepy. Oh. This next one is one where my anticipation and excitement for it has really grown like every day since seeing it on my TBR pile and that is Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Zadavi. This is translated from the Arabic by Jonathan Wright and this is a really interesting book because it was on the Man Booker International one year. I can't remember which year now but it received a lot of like hype. A lot of people were hauling it but I have seen barely anyone actually read it and review it and that kind of concerns me because I don't know if people are just like DNFing it or like they didn't enjoy it or like what's going on there but I know that this has a lot of social commentary and so I've been kind of avoiding the like Goodreads reviews of it because I kind of want to go into this with my own like a blank slate of an interpretation and I am just really like intrigued as to how this modern retelling of Frankenstein is going to be portrayed because it follows a young man named Hadi who he is living in US occupied Baghdad and he is really frustrated because the Iraqi government isn't doing anything about the fact that there are like body parts strewn alongside the streets from a bunch of like bombings and IEDs and things like that and so he decides that he is going to sew together these body parts into one body so that they can be properly buried and it's also kind of like a political like statement and then he discovers that this like creature that he's made of these um victims body parts 
is missing and suddenly murders start happening in Baghdad and um, Hadi believes that the two are connected. And I really enjoyed the original Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which I read back in 2018, I believe. And I am not one who really reads a lot of retellings. I certainly have never read one by um, or about Frankenstein, but I think this is such a interesting angle to examine or re-examine the like Frankenstein story through and I just I don't know why this just really intrigues me and I am really hoping that I enjoy this one and um although yes it might be like a more like atmospheric Halloween read because it is like a retelling of Frankenstein I am definitely coming into this more for the social commentary as well um so yeah really excited about this one next I have Human Acts by Han Kang, translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. I have two copies of this book I feel the need to explain. So this copy I bought shortly after reading The Vegetarian, back whenever it was like up on the Man Booker International Prize, and Human Acts was translated pretty quickly after that, um, like worldwide popularity. And I really enjoyed the writing style of The Vegetarian. Um, I kind of wish that I would reread the story now or sometime in the next couple of years because I think I might get a little bit more out of it. But anyway, back to Human Acts. The plot of Human Acts intrigued me more. And um, this is the story of a young man who has been killed in a um, student uprising that happened in South Korea in 1980 and was brutally suppressed by the government. So this young man has been killed and his soul is wandering trying to be reunited with his physical body. Meanwhile, his best friend is attempting to find his body to be able to return it to his family. And um, so I first bought this because of that like um, plot that just sounded so interesting to me. I've heard that it serves as like an allegory for South Korea finding its voice um, after the dictatorship that controlled it for a number of years. Um, and this was just such a like haunting cover really. But then I was living overseas in Germany and I was really wanting to pick this up and I knew I wasn't going to be going home for the next like seven months. So I was like, okay, I'll just buy a copy here. And I found this copy that has um, like Korean characters um, and then these like really um, intimidating bullets on the cover. And I didn't read it still and for some reason I forgot to like take this to my local bookstore in Germany and so I brought it home and now have two copies but I'm kind of thankful for that now because this copy is beautiful but it has a weird like texture on it that scratches really easily so I think that I'll be reading like this actual like more like floppier paperback um but I don't know if I'm gonna keep both copies um I guess it will depend on if I enjoy it or not um but I'm just like, I can't believe that I have two copies of this freaking book and I haven't read it still. And it's been like four years now. So yeah, these will be fulfilling the foreign country prompt and finally both will be removed from my TBR shelf. Then for a morally gray character prompt, I am going with Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This is the story of a girl named Camille who she is fresh out of a psych ward. Um, some trigger warnings for this is that she used to self mutilate and I believe she was also an alcoholic and um, attempted suicide. So she is coming from a lot of baggage into this story and she is revisiting her hometown where there has been a series of young girls who have been murdered and the police are absolutely like completely lost in this they have no clue who would do this in such a small town and so Camille is coming there as a journalist and um forced to really reckon with uh her traumatic childhood and specifically her relationship with her mother and this was adapted into a HBO series a couple years ago with Amy Adams and I absolutely loved it it was amazing I was actually motivated to pick up the audiobook because of that. So I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook and then maybe rewatch the series over October because I just, I loved it so much. And I'm really intrigued as to what, um, if any differences there were in the um, like actual book because it was such a dark TV show that I can't imagine they would have cut anything out. So yeah, that will be my morally gray character prompt. 
Then for a undead character, I am going to go with Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is my third attempt to read this audiobook. I actually really like the narration cast. It's a full cast, but I know for sure that Alan Cummings and Tim Curry are some of the narrators and the narrators are excellent, but the story is not one that really like grips me. I read the first like eight hours of it the first time around and then stopped and then the second time I made it up to 10 hours. I only have five hours left and I know all of the details that lead up to those five hours so I might just finish those five hours and call it a day but I feel like I should restart the audiobook from the beginning to be sure. I just can't imagine trying to restart it for a third time so I'm a little conflicted on that one but it's gonna fulfill my undead character prompt. I am finally gonna finish that book because third time is the charm I hope. Yeah so that's all the stuff that I will be reading for um, Gothtober. I still have a few like physical books and audiobooks that I will now be getting to as well. So the first of three physical books that I'd like to get to is Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is a very short book. I honestly think that it might be considered a novella of a father and two sons who have recently lost the mother of the family and a crow visits them to help them through their grieving process. I am so excited for this after having read Lanny last month by Max Porter. I just have such a love for that and I would really like to go back and see his first work and um, this was also adapted into a play with um, Killian Murphy who is a phenomenal actor and I really wanted to read it after I had first heard it, that it was being adapted into that but I just completely forgot that it was on my shelves and Oh, I'm so excited for this and I also just want to point out this absolutely gorgeous cover. I think that this is going to be one of those books that I just pick up on kind of a whim one night and power through maybe with like a cup of cocoa or something because yeah I, I'm i just really excited for this one although I think it's going to be a little bit dark from the subject matter. Then I'd like to pick up Classic Tales of Horror by Edgar Allan Poe in this gorgeous um, Arcturus Classics edition. These are the like classics that I collect back here and I have my nonfiction ones over here um but this is a collection of 20 of Edgar Allan Poe's short stories specifically his horror short stories they have a different one that is um detection and adventure but I am not going to pick that up for this month um this has a lot of Edgar Allan Poe's short stories that I've already read before but um there is still about like 60% of the stories that I haven't read and I haven't read Poe in years now, so I'm interested to see if my perception of his writing has changed, if I still enjoy his stories as much. Um, these are pretty short stories, so I think that I'm going to try to read like one every night or one every other night, something like that, um, because I definitely don't need to read them all in one sitting. Um, and I'm just so excited for this because I, I think the last time that I read Poe I was in high school, so definitely been a while and... Oh, some of my absolute favorites are in here so it's just a really big like <laughs> uh throwback for me. This next book I know I have seen like all over the place. I think I first saw on either Lauren Wade Reads or Simon of Savage Reads channel um, and that is The Five by Haley Rubenhold. This is a nonfiction book about the victims of Jack the Ripper specifically looking at the myth that they were all prostitutes and that that somehow like lessens the fact that they were brutally murdered um and this is meant to give agency back to the women who were his victims and um explain like their life stories before that because they were so much more than just victims and a lot of female victims are often demeaned um if they were you know working as um sex workers or um you know blamed in a sense for being out late at night or whatever and this is looking to actually examine the women for their lives and not the unfortunate circumstances that surrounded their death and I'm really excited about this I admittedly am a little bit obsessed with like the Jack the Ripper case just because it was like so bizarre how that happened and relatively like recently like it hasn't even been like 200 years so yeah it's just um this is really interesting because there hasn't been like a book like this before on the actual victims and the victims are the part that actually intrigues me about the case so really excited to get to this one. Now on to the two other audiobooks that I'd like to listen to this month. The first being With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is my second of Acevedo's works. I previously read 
the Poet X back in August and absolutely loved it. The writing style was just beautiful and it was narrated by the author, which was amazing. She did such a great job. And this is the story of a girl who became pregnant at 16 and is now a single mom, I believe. And she has dreams of being a chef and this is about her journey to make that happen. And I am so excited for this because I love cooking and I am a big fan of like the food memoir genre as well and I think this is going to be really interesting because it's like a fictionalized food memoir. I think that this is going to be a really great and celebratory read and I'm so excited for it. The final book that I would like to listen to and read in general this month is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This is like becoming a modern classic of Halloween. It is a middle grade book about a boy who is raised in a cemetery and there is like a reasoning behind that but that is slowly discovered through the novel and I remember I read a part of this in middle school actually but we didn't read like the full thing for some reason and it has like haunted my nightmares since because I have always wanted to finish this and I finally got the audiobook because there is I believe a full cast narration. I am really excited to finally listen to this one. Um, it's gonna be such a perfect like spooky atmospheric read so yeah and those are all of the books that I am hoping to get to in October. It's a pretty ambitious TBR but um, I have hope that I will make it through it. So um, thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great spooky season. Bye!